So we have a special privilege today of, of baptizing my grandson, as well as having all of um, my father-in-law's family here. So uh, we've taken up, well, most of them, yeah. We're taking up most of the, that section of the church, so, uh, um, but I promise there won't be any lightning strikes, at least, at least I don't think there will be, so. So our call to worship this morning comes from Psalm 46, and the psalmist tells us, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations, and I will be exalted among the earth. So we're going to be focusing on what it is to be still before God today. Um, we've been talking about the abiding life, abiding in God, and so this is the, the next in our series. So we'll be, be looking at that throughout, uh, throughout the next couple of weeks. I encourage you to stand. We're going to sing our, our song for the month, Christ, Our Hope in Life and Death. Without you, I 
So as we, uh, as we gather this morning to worship a holy and perfect God, we gather with a need in our hearts. So let's confess that need before our Lord this morning. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning to ask for your forgiveness. We have sinned against you and against ourselves and need your cleansing. We have tried to do what is right, but have not been able to keep our way pure. We know that we are to put to death the deeds of the flesh, yet the old nature dies hard. We need your tender touch and your cleansing grace to help us to stand in your presence again. Thank you for your forgiveness and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The scriptures tell us that if we confess our sins unto him, that he, that is God, is faithful and just and will, purify, will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So as we have confessed our sins before God and believe in Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we know that our sins are indeed forgiven us. Let's confess our faith this morning. It's found in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from where he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Psalm 91, verses 1 through 6. And the psalmist tells us, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, My refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. So if I can have uh, the children come forward, we're going to discuss a few things. Hey, Cher, could you bring me uh, some batteries up too, please, for the microphone? You guys can just go ahead and sit right here, if you'd like. Right there. Uh-oh. All right, so I'm gonna ask a really silly question. You guys know what this is? Okay, and this is a smartphone or a phone, right? Do you guys have a phone? I know you guys don't. Do you have a phone? You have one yet? These are really popular, right? Everybody seems to have them, right? Or I know what you guys have, tablets or your, uh, your little switches and you know, the video game players, right? You guys all have all of those things, right? Electronic devices. They seem to rule our day today, don't they? But what's the one downfall to the, to the phone or the electronic device? It dies, right? It lasts for so many hours and then it's done. And then you have to wait so many hours to recharge it, right? Do you know what's like a smartphone or a tablet or a switch or any other electronic device? God? <laughs> Us, right? Us. You see, in our spiritual life, we think that we have all this unlimited power, and we really do have all this unlimited power, except for one small fact. We have to be recharged. We have to plug ourselves in to God so that we can recharge our lives. Do you have any idea how we do that? Sleep. <laughs> of course, that would come from you. <laughs> 
good. We do, we do sleep and it recharges our bodies, right? We eat and it gives us energy and stuff. But we're talking on our spiritual life. How do we recharge our spiritual life? Ask for forgiveness. Excellent, yes. How about when we open up what's in uh, um, Lexi's hand here? The Bible, right? When we read our Bible or we pray. You know, Jesus did that. Jesus took time out every single day and spent time with God, his Father, in prayer and communication. That's how he recharged. That's how we are supposed to recharge. We're supposed to take time every day, look to his word, and talk to God. We call it quality time, or recharging, or devotion life, or solitude with God. So I'm going to encourage you guys from today, take some time every day. And it doesn't have to be a long time, but just, just some time to talk to God every day when you're all alone and in a quiet place. So we can shut out all the distractions of the world around us and hear what God has to say. All right? And we're going to talk more about that. So guess what? Since you guys came up here, you guys... You can't have one. Just one. Okay, thank you. Anybody else want one? If you want one, you have to come get it. That's the rule. You don't have to stay up here. You just have to come up and get it. We're going to be talking about having some solitude with God, some quiet time with God. And excuse me a minute while I change these batteries out. Can you hear me? Be quiet, Bryce. I have a sports illustration for you, which I don't do very often because you all know that uh, my sports abilities are extremely limited, mostly about sitting on the bench watching others. But in 1924, the Washington Senators played in the World Series against the New York Giants. Dad, do you remember that? Oh, sorry. He was playing. He was playing. So in game seven, the Senators were down a run in the bottom of the ninth when Leon Goslin stepped up to the plate with two outs. The season was on the line, and Goslin drove a 2-2 pitch deep off the wall. Seeing the outfielder had misplayed the bounce, Goslin rounded first for second and then rounded second heading towards third. And he looked up, saw his coach motioning him home, so Goslin sprinted to the plate, and as he slid home, the relay throw arrived. The home plate ump delayed the call to consult with the other umps, and then he called Goslin out. The stadium went up in an uproar. People were booing and hissing and screaming and yelling, and everybody was going crazy. The, the senator's coach stormed out on the field, and the ump said, the batter is out, not because he didn't beat the throw, but because he missed first base. That short story illustrates that in all aspects of life, it's critical that we touch all the bases, right? That we hit the bases in order and it is especially true in our spiritual walk. We must get first things first. Major in the majors. I had a, uh, a professor in seminary, was a wonderful man, and he used to always say, we must ensure that we only major in the majors and not major in the minors. And so often we get caught up in that. First base in our spiritual life just happens to be 
having quiet time or a time of intimacy or solitude with God. One of the most important aspects of our Christian walk is to recharge with God on a daily and regular basis. There is nothing that is more important than communing with the Creator to take personal care for your soul. Did you guys catch that? There is nothing more important than communing with God the Father to take care of your soul. Unfortunately, especially in our lives today, there are far too many people who never engage or only minimally pursue intimacy with God. I'm going to ask you, when was the last time you talked to God? You don't have to answer that question, just answer it to yourself. Think about it. When was the last time you stopped and spent a moment to commune with your Father in heaven, to discuss things with him, to recharge your spiritual walk? When we look around, we see exactly how often people talk to their Father in heaven and work on their spiritual walk. All I have to do is look at the condition of our nation. Look at the condition of our families around us and look at our own lives. And we see we are sadly lacking in time with our Father. So, for those of us that weren't with us last week, even those of you that were, if you remember, we started a series on what it means to abide in Christ. What it means to walk intimately with our Lord. We talked about how abiding in, how we, how we abide in Christ because we abide in the vine. That is Jesus Christ. And we talked how it was an ongoing exercise in our Christian walk. It wasn't a once and done like we seem to act like it is. Right? Sometimes we think that we profess Jesus as our Lord and Savior and we're all finished. And while that is true for sin and salvation, it is not true for our Christian walk. We must constantly abide in the vine, right? Just a reminder what Jesus says in John 15. He says that, lost my spot here, that Jesus is the true vine. He says, I am the vine and my father is the vine dresser. He says, every branch of mine that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it may bear more fruit. And he says, already you are clean because of the word I have spoken to you. But then this is the important part. He says, abide in me and I in you. The branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. He says, you cannot bear fruit unless you abide in me. You must abide in Christ to be part of the vine. You must be connected to Christ to constantly be recharged. And to abide means to walk daily with the Lord. Are you walking daily with your Lord? Today we're going to talk about the value and purpose of a daily time of solitude with God. Some people call it quality time or even a devotional life with God, but we need to spend quality time with God in our lives. So have you ever noticed how busy life seems to be today? I, uh, I have been complaining to my family all week about today. We have, we have our reunion going on and today is like the busiest day ever. Right? We have things stacked all the way through, which is wonderful. It's a great time with family, but it's like, holy smokes, right? Just a picture of what our lives tend to look like. But you ever notice that you always seem to have time for the things that are important to you? Right? We always fit those things in that we really want to make happen. Because we all have the exact same amount of time. 
It's been said that few decisions are really a matter of time. Most decisions are a matter of value. What do you find most important in your life? Because those are the things that you fit in. So the secret of a growing, dynamic Christian is one that spends time alone with God. If you want to be a dynamic, growing Christian, you must find time to spend it with God. So just to put all of this into perspective real quick, according to the 2020 Microtrends survey that they did, the average lifespan in the U.S. is now 79 years. So we break that down a little bit. That equates to 28,835 days from life to death at that average, or 292,000 hours, or 41,522 minutes. Okay, not that you're going to remember those numbers, but let, just to break it down, how do you spend your time on average? Well, working based on a 50-year career out of, that, out of that 79 years, and you work at approximately 8.8 .8 hours a day. It's 44 hours a week, that's 95 days a year, 13 years of your life, if you break out that time. Sleeping, where's Lexi at, or Lindsay at? Sleeping. Eight hours a day, 56 hours a week, 121.3 days a year, 26.25 years of your life spent sleeping. Here's the important one today. Talked about the smartphones, right? So talking, texting, emails, and surfing the web. And this is actually a low number because this was 2020 and it's gone up significantly since then, five, <clears throat> sorry, 5.4 hours a day. That equates to 17 years of your life like this. Any idea what the average time a Christian spends seeking God? How much? A little bit lower. Eight minutes a day. You spend five hours a day on your phone or texting or whatever, but you spend eight minutes seeking God. The Christian life in its basic form is knowing God, isn't it? That's the basic tenet of the Christian life. Knowing God, hearing his voice, obeying his leading, plugging in to the creator around us. That's the basic tenet of the Christian life. It's seeking God so that he can fill us with his knowledge and his will so that we can live a life worthy of him. Basic tenet. So how do, we do, how do we go about this? What do we need to do? Well, we take our advice from Jesus, right? Just take an example from Jesus. Open your Bibles to Mark chapter 1, if you would. We take our lead from Jesus, and we look at how he lived his life. We can usually apply it to our lives and find a reasonable balance in life around us. Mark chapter 1, beginning at verse 35, and we read, Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. And Simon and his companions went to look for him, and when they found him, they exclaimed, Everyone is looking for you. And we're going to leave it there. We take that as an example for our lives. We can see that even Jesus, the very Son of God, spent time with his Father in heaven. This verse highlights the idea of solitude and silence with the Father. 
You see, silence is learning how to stop talking long enough to hear God and ha- hear what he has to say. You know, how often while we're praying to God, we're continually talking, telling God how he should run the world. Anybody else find yourself there? I find myself there all the time. You know, God, if you did this, things would be smoother, at least for me. And then there's the solitude idea. The solitude idea is focusing ourselves and withdrawing to a place where we can meet with God and not be distracted by the cares and concerns of the world around us. I find uh, that when I drive, when I'm all by myself, I don't, I don't have the radio on or anything else. I don't like that, but I like to be in, in silence, and I start to talk to God. And that tends to be my, uh, my silence and solitude. But I find that I get distracted, and I find myself not going where I would, wanted to go. You know, if I'm driving to a specific location, I look up, and I'm like, where am I? Why did I get here? Because it's not where I really wanted to go. So I do not recommend that driving be your uh, place of silence and solitude. But it does work if that's what you want. The idea of having silence and solitude are both this idea about abiding in the Lord, seeking him to fill our lives. You see, quality time isn't an idea of where a verse a day keeps the devil away. And we sometimes act that, right? Oh, I had my one verse devotion and the quick verses with it, and now I'm on with my, with my, with my day. Quality time is not a marathon read through the Bible in a year. Both of those are good things, but they're not what quality time is all about. Quality time is not a maneuvering through a prayer gauntlet, trying to remember every missionary, aunt, uncle, and cousin that's on our list so that we can get through it all in a 20-minute period without adding more to it. That is not quality time with God. Quality time is a daily time of intimate contemplation on who God is and where you are in relation to him. Quality time with God is you listening to his voice and his leading in your life. How many of you actually have a prayer closet that you go to? Anybody? Anybody willing to admit it or not? Have <clears throat> you ever seen that movie War Room? It's, it's about um, a prayer warrior lady who's teaching um, another lady how to be a prayer warrior. And the, the thing that I think about in that is she goes to her prayer closet, which is literally a closet. She goes into her prayer closet for the first time and she can't sit still. She brings snacks and she does all this stuff. And she, she eats her snacks and she's up and down and she's doing all kinds of things and so on and so forth. That's how we find our quality time, don't we? And she had to learn to overcome all of that to spend time with God. We do too because there's distractions in the world around us, aren't there? There's things on our mind. How many times, and let's ask this now, how many of you are writing lists for what you need to get done today while we're t- I'm talking here? Debbie is, huh? I'm not, yeah, okay. (laughs) By the way, you'd be surprised at what you see up here. (laughs) I see a lot of this sometimes. I'm making notes. They say, sure. How's the game going, right? You see, quality time, sometimes we get this thought in our heads that quality time has got to take a minimum of 20 minutes or whatever. And it's not really the case. Quality time, some days, involves five minutes where we sit down, we contemplate God, he speaks to us, we get this thought, and we run. And some days, it might take an hour or two hours Quality time is not about the time. It's about having an encounter with the creator. The primary purpose of quality time isn't for gathering 
um, principles or gleaning spiritual um, produce or, or different doctrines and, and memorizing them. That's not the purpose of quality time with God. The purpose of quality time is to cultivate a relationship with God himself. You say, well, how do I talk to God? How do I have a relationship with God? We seek him out. Just like you have a relationship with anybody else. How do you do it? You spend time with them. Right? We talk to people. We discuss things. We, <clears throat> we have a heart occupied with God. Quality time is a time to discover who God is. This is the first and most important purpose. Do you know who God is? See, a lot of times in our lives, we think, yeah, we're God. Or at least we're awful close to him, right? Dear God, please take care of this or that and do this and, and I need this other item and please do this and give me that red sports car and make sure the boat works and all of these different things. And while talking to God like that is okay, we gotta think about what are we doing? Right? We're talking to the creator of the universe. Do we understand who he is? You think about Isaiah in chapter 6. Isaiah in chapter 6, Isaiah wakes up in a vision and he's in the throne room of God and he sees God in all of his glory and the first words out of his mouth, he says, Woe is me! He says, I am undone! Because the idea he saw God in all of his glory and he knew that he was insignificant in comparison to that. Do we realize that? Isaiah says, seek the Lord while he may be found and call upon him while he is near. So often we get so rushed in our day that we jump up, we say, yay God, thank you for this day, praise you, I'm on my way. And that's it. And some days that's fine but we really need to seek him. Quality time is also a time to get direction from God. Throughout the Bible, we see the guiding hand of God on his people. We see it over and over and over again. And how often have you said to yourself or to others, yeah, God just doesn't listen to me. He never guides me. He never talks with me. He never walks with me. And yet, if you look back in your life, you see his hand on so many different decisions and actions that you can't possibly count them all. And then we still look ahead and say, where's God? He must not be here. It's absolutely amazing that we do that over and over again. The writer of Proverbs tells us, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your steps. You hold that verse in your heart. You think about God does direct us. Quality time is also a delight. It's a time to delight in who God is. The word delight literally is to take action to enjoy. Does your quality time or your time alone with God, is that a time that you enjoy doing? Or is it a chore? Is it a time like, oh, I gotta go do my Bible reading and my quality time. Sorry guys, come back in an hour. Oh, I'll be happier then, I hope. Is that the way it is? The quality time should be a time when we find out who God really is and what he has done in our lives to look at his blessings, his provisions, Instead of trying to find the things in the world, right? We seek, we seek the stuff in the world, don't we? Right? We all want the newest and greatest gadgets. We want the stuff. We gotta go work to get it, right? You gotta work harder, get more money, so that I can get more stuff. So that it'll break, so I can go work harder, get more money, so I can get more stuff. 
so that I could put it in the storage unit. Really? But that's how our lives tend to go. People are shaking their head no, but that's, that's how it is, right? Did you know that in America, we're the only nation in the world that takes our cars worth thousands of dollars and parks them on the street so that we can fill our garages full of junk? <laughs> Stuff that we refuse to throw away. It's crazy, isn't it? We need to take some time and delight in the Lord. Look at what he's doing for us and what he is. So now to the nitty gritty. How do we do this? I'm going to offer you just a couple of suggestions because you have to do it on your own. You have to find your own path in this. But these are some suggestions that work. First, begin with a seeking heart. So often we approach God with um, a heart that's hard, heart that's cold. We don't really care what God has to say unless it fits our agenda. So we approach God with a seeking heart. I've talked about George Mueller lots of times in my messages. You guys remember who George Mueller is, right? He was that um, 19th century um, English guy that started all the orphanages. Never once did Mueller ever ask anybody for support for his orphanages. He only asked God. He was one of the most um, profound prayer warriors of all time. When you read his prayer journals, he wrote his prayer journals on, on two pages. So he'd open up the journal and on the left side he'd list the prayers. And he left the right side blank so that he could fill in the answers to his prayers over the years. And do you know that in his prayer journals, Every one of the prayers that he ever prayed were answered except for one. There was only one prayer that was never had an answer written by it, and that was a prayer for the salvation of the soul of one of his friends. And George Mueller died before the guy came to Christ. But he came to Christ at George Mueller's funeral. So, just to let you know. Anyway... George once said, a believer's first responsibility with each new day is to bring his soul into happy relationship with God. It is your responsibility each new day to bring your soul into happy relationship with God. George Mueller was once told that we don't have time to pray and he said, no, wrong. We don't have time to not pray. You have to take time to commune with your creator. Jesus tells us, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And the one who knocks, the door will be opened. How often in your life do you say, God is not listening to me. He doesn't answer my prayers. He's not talking to me. And the reason is, is because you really aren't asking. You're not seeking him. We want to blame it all on God, but maybe the fault is ours. We begin with a seeking heart. Next, follow a simple plan. There are so often times when I talk to people about their devotional time or their quality time, and they tell me, oh yeah, I've got this plan, and they start listing off their plan, and it's like this complicated um, gymnastics of time and, and effort and everything else. Keep it simple. Remember the term kiss? Keep it simple, silly. Or use your another word for the last one, yeah? Right, son? <clears throat> Keep it simple. Time with your creator is all that we're looking for. You don't have to have, read through the Bible, oh, I've got to read all of these verses, and then I have to pray through this list, and then I have to do this and this and this. Just spend some time. Focus on seeking God, not just checking the box. Say, oh, I spent my time in my prayer closet, I'm done, next. And for your Bible reading, 
everybody. Pick a Bible you can read. One that you can understand. It doesn't matter if it's a paraphrase or if it's a literal translation or if it's King James only or if it's ESV. Pick one that you can read and that you like. Because the idea is to get close to the creator. Let God move you through his word. Next, select a specific time. This is kind of tough. Right, Jesus rose up early in the morning while it was still dark. I can count on one hand the number of times I rise up early while it's still dark. Okay, right, Chair? I am not a morning person. If you're not a morning person, then don't spend quality time with God in the morning. Get up, have your cup of coffee, do all of your other stuff, and then spend time with him. Or however it is, pick a time that works for you. But make a commitment to that time and protect it. What's the first thing to leave out of your schedule almost every day? Quality time, right? Oh, I'll get to that later. Oh, I'm too busy today. I'll make up for it tomorrow. Take your time and protect that time. And finally, choose a special place. This is a place where you can have some silence and some solitude, where you can get away from the cares of the world for a little bit and spend time with God. Jesus says, when you pray, enter into your closet, and when you have shut the door, pray to the Father in secret, and the Father who sees in secret shall reward you openly. Take some time. <clears throat> I was trying to think of what my daughter's t-shirt says. The mountains are calling, I must go. Is that the way that goes? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> God is calling. You must go. So pick a spot. If it's to the mountains, great. If it's just out into your car, that's fine. But take some time where you can get away from the cares of the world around you. So we have, begin with a seeking heart. Follow a simple plan, select a specific time, and choose a special place. The basic elements needed to spend quality time with God. You remember what I said at the very beginning of this message? Besides the sports analogy? First things first. First things first. Thank you. There is nothing more important than communing with the Creator and taking personal care for your soul. There is nothing more important short of accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You must take care of your soul. And we do this by spending each day or time each day with the Lord. That's first base. So, we're going to take a moment because I have the privilege and honor of baptizing my eighth grandchild. So, I've baptized them all so far. Yes. So, I'm going to ask um, Jesse and Taylor and Samara to bring up uh, Coulter. And uh, Grandma gets to come up also. right little man so beloved let us hear the command of our Lord Jesus Christ concerning holy baptism and Jesus came up and spoke to them saying all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth go therefore and make disciples of all the nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you 
And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And then we hear how graciously our Lord Jesus Christ received little children to him and opens the door of the kingdom of God for them. Mark tells us, they were bringing children to him so that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, permit the children to come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. And truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child will not enter it at all. And he took them into his arms and began blessing them, laying his hands on them. So in thankfulness and in faith, we bring our children to the Lord in holy baptism, in order that they may share in his blessings, and though they are sinful human beings under the law of sin and death, they may become children of God by grace in the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit. So let us pray. Eternal Almighty God, we thank you that in your church you have instituted baptism in your name, and that in baptism you promise to be our Father, to save us from sin through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Redeemer, and to regenerate and sanctify us by your Holy Spirit. Receive this child whom we bring before you, and let him receive the eternal blessings of holy baptism. Grant that he may grow up in your church as your child, and let the fear and love of God always be part of his home. Teach him to fear and love you and to preserve, and preserve him from all evil until he shall come unto you into your heavenly kingdom. Amen. I get to ask you guys a couple questions. <laughs> Did you practice for this, right? You studied, right? So. Jesse and T, do you renounce the devil and all of his works and all of his ways? If so, answer, yes, I renounce them. Yes, I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? If so, answer, yes, I believe. Yes, yes I believe. Do you desire that Coulter be baptized into the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit? If so, answer, we do. We do. Do you promise to instruct Coulter in the word of God and to nurture him in the fear and love of the Lord? If so, answer, we do. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep your going out and your coming in from this time forward forevermore. So I'm going to ask you to uh, lay cold over that. Honey, we can grab the, uh, the two towels that are there, please. Thank you. Coulter, receive the sign of the cross on your mind and heart as a token that you shall believe in the crucified, risen Lord Jesus Christ. No. No. Coulter James Wisner, I baptize no. you in the name of the Father of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has made you his child in holy baptism and has received you into his believing church, may he strengthen you with his grace unto life everlasting. Amen. To all of you here present today, you are witnesses that Coulter has been baptized in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. You are, all, you are to remember him before God in your prayers and to make certain as far as possible that he is brought up in the faith and fear of God so that he may abide in Christ from this day forward, even now through baptism, he has been grafted into him. Because we believe that God gives the gift of faith in baptism but that this gift will be lost unless the child is taught the word of God, upheld by prayer and given a Christian example to follow. This is first the responsibility of you parents, and then it is the responsibility of the entire congregation to keep him in prayers. So we may be faithful in this responsibility and privilege. We pray to God. May peace be with you. So I get to introduce the newest member of the congregation.
um, little gift that you can get uh, engraved if you want to on the back to give this date and stuff. So. Love you guys. Thank you all for, uh, for being part of that with me. A wonderful opportunity, isn't it? Oh, um, <clears throat> as we continue our service, just a couple of quick announcements to, uh, to give. Um, those of you that are uh, gonna be in town, obviously most of this side of the room is not gonna be around here. But um, August 3rd at 7 p.m., mark the calendars, is a Wednesday, August 3rd, the Ambassadors, which is a traveling music group from our Bible school, are going to be here singing. So um, there's five of them, and I have a poster. There'll be a poster down below, as well as we'll have some uh, inserts out in the, uh, in the uh, bulletins in the next couple of weeks. So um, Faith church downtown is going to be uh, hosting them and so we're going to have the concert at faith because it's easier and more uh, <laughs> and it's it's more centrally located but we are going to have a a barbecue at faith starting at six o'clock on that day so faith is providing the meat and what else faith is providing the meat and something else do you remember uh, bryce did you say the meat? The meat, yes, yeah. and something else. Uh, drinks. drinks. They're going to provide meat and drinks. They are asking everybody else to bring either a salad or a side dish or a dessert. Um, so it will be a potluck kind of deal um, at 6, and then at 7 o'clock, the ambassadors will give a concert for us. At Faith. At Faith. And there might be a need for hosting um, one or two or three of them. Um, I said that you guys might be willing to if you guys are in the area, but I don't know for sure if we need to yet, so. <clears throat> and are there any other announcements that need to be made that, Sherry, do you know of anything? No. Grant has an announcement, no, he doesn't? <laughs> Sorry, I was just kidding with that. Go ahead, uh, Julie. Uh, next Friday night, Excellent. And that, what day is that? Friday night, 7 p.m. And Dominic is a star. <laughs> Excellent. Karen? Yeah. Just me again. So BBS is coming fast, and we still have openings to um, feed our guests that will be with us for the week. Lunches, we have uh, four lunches, I think, still, and dinners. And then if there's someone here that would love to do an activity with them in the evening time, come on see me. Excellent, thank you. If there's no other announcements, then uh, are there any updates to our prayer list? Oh, yes, thank you. She did not even make it into the list. Um, so um, Logan, my granddaughter, um, they were up visiting, and she had a, a acute appendicitis, right? Is how, is how they say it. Um, so she ended up having an appendectomy or whatever the surgery is. Um, and she's like, oh, yeah, it was nothing. So, so she spent a couple days in the hospital um, eating great hospital food. And now, uh, now she's home and running around like nothing happened. So anyway, we'll keep uh, Logan in our, 
um, in our prayers. Also, uh, travel mercies for all of the extended family because they're coming and going and heading back home. Some of them traveled quite a ways. So, and Lavon, you had something. Thank you. There was a, yeah. Um, a friend, Dylan, he had a, he was on his motorcycle and he crashed. I, and he has a CT, this, uh, the scan came back okay, but he's still in a coma and he's not responding. So Dylan was in an accident and he's still in a coma. Yeah, Julie. My uh, sister, Dana, she lives in D.C. and um, we're still pending results, but she's been told she has some kind of cancer. <laughs> in her tummy area, we don't know what that means yet. We hope to find out within the week. Okay. We'll be praying for um, Dana and the wisdom for doctors to diagnose and treat. Susan. First, I want to remind everybody about our activity center over there and how God built that for us. And then I want to ask for prayers for um, Big Sky Bible Camp. They are working to expand, and they do so many amazing things with all the disability people. They have camps for them, and I know for Dominic, it just has been such a blessing, and so many other kids there. And I went to watch the program on, on Saturday when I picked them up, and Everybody is like, Tom, Tom, how you doing? How you this trip? Why are you back? And they all are so amazing. There are people there that have gone to camp since it started 30 years ago that are still going. Wow. So I ask everybody to pray. Pray that God helps them to expand and build the facility so they can offer more programs to more people. Okay. Let's go to the Lord in prayer then, shall we? <clears throat> a Father in heaven, you tell us in your word that whatever we ask in prayer with faith, we will receive. So this morning, Lord, we come boldly to your throne of grace in our time of need to receive your grace and mercy. And we lift these requests up before you, Lord, knowing that you hear and answer our prayers. So we pray, Father, for the continued ministries of your church here at Stillwater. Pray, Father, wisdom and guidance and, and provision as we step ahead in faith and and. Do the ministries that you have us doing, Lord. We also pray for marriages and families within our congregation and community and pray that you strengthen them and, and build them, Father, and keep them strong, Lord. We pray for our country and our leaders. You tell us in your word that we are to pray for all those who have authority over us that we may live a peaceable life. So we lift up our president and his cabinet, Lord. We lift up all of our national leaders, our state leaders, and our local leaders and pray, Father, that you will work in their hearts, drive, draw them to you, Lord, and um, Father, um, give them wisdom to make decisions that affect our lives. We pray for workers to work in the harvest field, Lord. You tell us that um, the harvest is indeed ripe unto harvest, but the workers are few. So I pray, Father, you will work in our hearts. Raise up men and women from this congregation to work in your harvest field, Lord, to be bold, to proclaim the gospel message, and share Jesus Christ with our neighbors. So, Father, we pray for uh, those who are serving in the military and as first responders within our nation. I pray, Lord, that you will just raise a hedge of protection around all those who are serving, whether they're overseas or here in the States, whether they're active duty or reserves. I just pray that you raise a hedge of protection around them and their families. Be with those who are serving as first responders, whether it's police or fire or, or medical field, Lord. I just pray, Lord, that your hand will be upon them and keep them safe as they serve you, Lord. So, Father, we also uh, pray for the Big Sky Bible Camp, Lord. I pray, Lord, that as they, as they um, seek to expand, that you will provide and, and guide and direct them so that they can um, do more programs to reach the lost, Lord, and to um, help people grow in the knowledge of you, Lord. We pray for those who are struggling with health concerns, and this morning we give praise that Logan's surgery went well and that she's doing so well. We uh, pray for... Uh, um, Dylan, who is, uh, was in an accident, is in a coma. I pray for wisdom and guidance for the doctors there, Lord. We lift up Dana also, Lord, and, and pray, Father, that you will be with her. And um, 
give wisdom and guidance as they diagnose and treat what's going on with her father and just pray your hand to be upon her, Lord. We also uh, lift up any of those who are in our hearts and minds, Father. Just pray um, that those who are struggling with, uh, with different health concerns, that you, that you as the great physician will heal them in accordance with your will, Lord. We pray for those who have suffered hail damage also, Lord, and just pray that, that you will be with them and guide them, Father, help them and provide as they take care of the um, issues with that. We also pray for those who are traveling, Lord, and just ask for travel mercies for them. So, Father, we pray all these prayers in Jesus' name. We also pray in the words that Jesus himself taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. If I can have a couple of ushers come forward, we'll continue our service by giving of our offerings to our Lord. invite you to stand. Father in heaven, we ask that you take these gifts and bless them, Father. Gifts that first came from you, but Lord, we ask that you bless them. Help us to use them wisely as we share Jesus Christ with our neighbors. We pray this in your name. Amen. Closing song is There is a Place of Quiet Rest.
the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.